Hello guys, in this video, we'll continue the Delta PLC tutorial with data processing instructions. After that, I will introduce two new softwares. Easy PLC and Machine Simulators. They can be used to write a PLC logic, and especially, simulate an industrial process like factory I.O. software. Then, in the next video, I will connect them to my Delta PLC, to write and test a program to calculate the mean value of a water tank volume. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Now, let's start the video, with the zone reset instruction. This instruction is used to clear an area of PLC memory. For example, D10, 11, to D25, or a group of bit addresses like Y0 to Y5. As you see, the entered addresses must be the same, and also, the first address is lower than the second one. Remember, we can use the simple reset instruction to clear an individual address. The next instruction is decode. Its inputs determine some bits, either from bit or word addresses. As you know, 3 bits can be used to store 8 states. For example to save numbers 0 to 7. So, at the output side, this instruction will use 8 bits starting from M0. The first state is that all bits are 0. In other words, the selected 3 bits have stored number 0. In this state, PLC will activate the first bit at the output side, M0. The next state is to change X1 to 1. At this time, the next address at the output part, M1, will be on. Similarly, based on the stored number at the input part, this instruction will activate only one bit, from M0 to M7. Note that, when a bit address is used at the output part, like M0, the second input, N, can be a number from 1 to 8. Based on this formula, PLC will determine how many bits will need, after the selected address. Now, pay attention to this example. Here a word address like D0 is used, and N is equal to 3. So, the first 8 bits of D0 will be used. Naturally, if N is equal to 4, then X4 will be used too, and also, all 16 bits of D0 for the output part. Thus, when a word address like D0 is used at the output, N can only be a number from 1 to 4. Alright. The next instruction, ENCODE, works inversely. It gets some bits, and stores a number on the selected location of the PLC memory. Let's continue with the SUM instruction. It is used to store the total of bits whose content is 1, among the bits of selected address. For now, only 3 bits are 1, so, the number 3 will be stored in D1. The next instruction, BON, is used to check a specific bit is on or not. For now, the state of this bit will be sent to the output. For example, if it's equal to 1, PLC will activate the M0 address, otherwise it will be 0. The next instruction is mean. Its inputs determine a set of numbers, and then calculate their average value. Note that, if the result has a fractional part, it will be left out. For now, only the integer part, number 8 will be stored in D10. Well, the SQR instruction can be used to store the square root of a number. Similarly, the fraction part will be left out. Now, let's see the FLT instruction. As you know, there are several standards to store numbers on the PLC memory. We can use a word which includes 16 bits to store an integer number from minus 32768 to 32767, or 32 bits to store a larger number. 
Remember that the last bit is used to determine the number sign. 0 for positive and 1 for negative numbers. To store real numbers like 10.25, or 0 0.15625, the floating point standard is used. The FLT instruction can be used to convert an integer number, stored on 16 or 32 bits, to its floating point form. Note that, the result of this instruction can change three special memories. 0, barrow, and carry flag. I explained them before. It also uses another special memory. M1081. If it's equal to 1, the FLT instruction will work inversely, like the int instruction. This instruction converts real numbers to integer numbers, by omitting their fraction parts. The int instruction uses 16 bits to store the result, and the dint instruction uses 32 bits. Alright, data processing instructions have been told. Before doing a simple practical project, let me introduce two new software, Easy PLC and Machine Simulator. In the next video, I will use them and also the mean instruction, to do a simple practical project. Now, let's continue this video with Easy PLC software. Well, there are three choices, to create a new project. A simple project to write your PLC logic. Creates an easy PLC program to control a virtual machine designed by machine simulator software, or create a project to control the designed virtual machine by an external driver like my Delta PLC. I will use the last choice in the next video. Now, let me use the second one. First, this message says, do you want to import input output variables? Let me skip this step, I will do it later. As you see, on the left side, the project has divided into three parts. Hardware, software, and HMI. The first part, hardware, is related to changing virtual PLC settings, or how this software can connect to a virtual machine designed by machine simulator software. Also, this software supports different ways to connect to other PLCs. In the next video, I will use this part to connect the Easy PLC software to my Delta PLC through the OPC server. Now, let's go to the next part, software. Here I can write a program to control an industrial process, which can be designed by machine simulator software. Let's open it. Note that, this software, Machine Simulator 3, is a part of the Easy PLC software suite. It can be used with Easy PLC software, and also any other PLC system. Well, at the beginning, we can see some features related to the software, and also a short description. Note that, if you are connected to the internet, these items can be used to find more information about this software. Alright, let's continue. If you click on the start, or on the machine tab, some predefined systems can be seen and used, or select the editor tab to create your own system. Okay, as you see, on the left side, many tools like basic shapes, robots, push buttons, LEDs, sensors, are categorized which can be used to design a new machine. For now, let me use the first predefined project or machine. In the next video, I will show you how a new system can be created, and also how its inputs or outputs can be adjusted. Now, on the right side, the project properties can be seen, or each device can be selected to see or change its properties on the right side. Now, let me test this system manually, without any PLC. This system has two digital sensors which can detect the box, and also two digital output which can be used to control the belt conveyor. Now, 
let me exit from the simulation mode, and click on the I.O. list icon. I click on the export button, to store all input-output symbols on my computer. I will use that inside the Easy PLC software. Now, let's exit from the editor window, and back to the machine tab to select the first predefined project. Alright, as you can see, this system has not connected to any PLC yet. In the next video, I will show you how it can be connected to my Delta PLC. For now, let's use a virtual PLC. So, let's back to Easy PLC software to write a simple program. Before writing a simple program, let me upload the input-output symbols, which I've stored on my computer recently. Now, I can use these symbols with these addresses, inside my program. Well, I'm not going to write a complete program, because the goal of this video is to learn how the Easy PLC software can be used. So, let me write a simple program to turn on the belt conveyor, and then stop it, every time our sensors will detect the box, at the end of the belt conveyor. Alright, this is my program. The next step is to save the project, and then compile it to ensure there isn't any error. Now, I must use this icon to send the program to a PLC. Before that, let me activate the virtual PLC of the Easy PLC software. Now, let's download the program into the virtual PLC. Note that, now, the machine simulator has connected to the virtual PLC automatically. Let me run the virtual PLC, to test its program. Ok, my program has worked correctly. Note that, like the other PLC software, I can activate the online mode inside the Easy PLC software to see how my program is working. Also, I can use force state, to change some input output signals. Alright, in this video I've explained Easy PLC, and also Machine Simulator software briefly. As I mentioned before, you can use these predefined systems too. You can click on each system to see its description on the left side, or click on Demo to see how the system must work. Then try to write your program and improve your PLC programming skills. In the next video, I will connect the software to my Delta PLC using the OPC server, 
and also will use mean instruction to calculate the average value of a water tank volume. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.